continue to read Ezekiel chapter 17. Uh, Two eagles and a vine. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set forth an allegory and tell the house of Israel a parable. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. A great eagle was power, uh, with powerful wings, long feathers, and a full plumage of varied colors came to Lebanon. Take hold of the top of a cedar. He broke, uh, taking hold of the top of a cedar, he broke off its topmost shoot and carried it away to a land of merchants where he planted it in a city of traders. He took some of the seed of your land and put it in a fertile so- in fertile, fertile soil. He planted it like a willow by abundant water, and it sprouted and became a low spreading vine. Its branches turned toward him, but its roots remained under it. So it became a vine and produced branches and put out leafy boughs. But there was another great eagle with powerful wings and full plumage. The vine now sent out its roots toward him from the plot where it was planted and stretched out its branches to him for water. It had been planted in good soil by abundant water so that it was so that it would produce branches, bear fruit and become a splendid vine. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Will it thrive? Will it not be uprooted and stripped of its fruit so that it withers? All its new growth will wither. It will not take a strong arm or many people to pull it up by the roots. Even if it is transplanted, will it thrive? Will it not wither completely when the east wind strikes it, wither away in the plot where it grew? Then the word of the Lord came to me, say to the rebellious house, do you not know what these things mean? Say to them, the king of Babylon went to Jerusalem and carried off her king and her nobles, bringing them back with him to Babylon. Then he took a member of the royal family and made a treaty with him, putting him under oath. He also carried away the leading men of the land so that the kingdom would be brought low, unable to rise again, surviving only by keeping his treaty. But the king rebelled against him by sending his envoys to Egypt to get horses and a large army. Will he succeed? Will he do, or will he who do, does such th- things escape? Will he break the treaty and yet escape? As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, he shall die in Babylon, in the land of the king who put him on the throne, whose oath he despised, and whose treaty he broke. Pharaoh, with his mighty army and great horde, will be no help to him in war, when ramps are built and siege works erected to destroy many lives. He despised the oath by breaking the covenant because he had given his hand in pledge and yet did all these things. He shall not escape. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. As surely as I live, I will bring down on his head my oath that he despised and my covenant that he broke. I will spread my net for him and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon and execute judgment upon him there because he was unfaithful to me. All his fleeing troops will fall by the sword, and the survivors will be scattered to the winds. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the very top of of a cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain, on the mountain heights of Israel. I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the field will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tree, oh, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken and will do it. Okay, so there's a lot here too. Um, uh, Sermon upon sermon. So if you need to go back and reread these parts, please do so because there is a lot here um about what ezekiel is telling us and what the lord even reveals he's saying that this is what's going to happen to israel so he gives us um imagery of about these uh vines in this in this eagle and then he tells us what it is what it is is that the israel has broken the covenant and so the judgment was that he was going to be utilizing Babylonia to come and go through Israel, go through Jerusalem and take them and exile them. And so 
that has happened once already. The king uh, has came, replaced the original king, and put, put the cousin on the throne. Correct me in the comments. Um, and so in that portion of time, they're still not following the covenant. They're still not following the commands. And so what the um, new king that was planted there by the king of Babylon did was try to have a treaty with Egypt again instead of relying on the Lord, instead of turning to the Lord. So the Lord understood this. The Lord knew it and said, Egypt's not going to be able to help you. You're going to get exiled. And in fact, the leader, who was the king at the time, would be taken to Babylon and judgment would be placed on him. And as we know, that does happen. That is fulfilled. So everything that the Lord says is fulfilled. Um, bringing past to present. We know that the Lord has given us the brand new covenant through his son. And that is the eternal covenant. That is the one that is forever by relying and trusting on our Lord and Savior, believing that he had sent his son to die for our sins. And we'll get more into that, particularly in the New Testament. But take note of all this information. Take note of it about the tree that grows, the tree that grows on the mountain, and for the birds to rest onto it, uh, for the birds to rest on its branches. All of this is very important. So take note. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think?